Hey guys, it's Ellen here and today is Floral Friday and we're painting a mixed media uh, watercolor slash gouache orchid. Um, I go over the drawing how to do this step by step and what I use step by step. So you're going to need some just a few colors of gouache and watercolor and you can mix the whites with the watercolor and I show you how I do this. It's really kind of simple and fun and uh, just a new thing to do, a new thing to try. Don't forget hit forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon where you have the traceable for this and other exclusive tutorials. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. And let's get started. Okay, to begin this tutorial, I'm um, going to teach you how to draw the orchid. If you're a Patreon member, you can just download this traceable. If not, I'm just going to teach you how to draw it. And it's pretty simple. Well, I also have an orchid tutorial that's um, on YouTube that's more of a watercolor but this is a mixed media one so uh, for the pot we're just gonna make this simple almost like a rounded square shape so you're gonna put a line down like you're gonna make a square right but then you're gonna round the corners on the bottom so that's the pot the simple pot the leaves just very simple leaves a scroll out leave like this another one here right we're gonna have another one out here and a small one here. See, I'm just doing this really loopy kind of goofy kind of leaves. They're not really, you know, intense leaves, these orchid leaves. Another little skinny one here. Uh, another big one here. So if you didn't see this, I'm like making these super big ones and some medium ones. This is like the center of the leaf. Small one here, a small one here, a little small one here, another little medium one here. And then for the orchid part, it's just like a branch that kind of curves like this. Just like this simple. And then at the bottom of the branch, I'm gonna put a little loop-de-doop. <laughs> it's just like a little bud, a little branch with another little bud, another little bud. But for the orchids, you can start off right here. Like, okay, so you have like this branch that kind of bends. And you start off like, mm, like a little bit half, a little bit more, a little bit less than halfway up. And you get this curved branch here, and we're gonna do the orchid. You can see the orchid. I'm gonna pull this paper down so you can see. Okay, so orchids have this funky, like little, like a butterfly kind of shape. They kind of go like this. See, like that. And then they have this bottom thing here. So it's like this whoop de doop. And then for the middle, it's just gonna be this little kind of like starburst kind of thing. So that's how they're gonna look. So they're gonna be like this doop de doop, just like I showed you there. And a little one here in the bottom and the starburst. And like another one here, doop de doop. <laughs> little sound effects. Like that. We're gonna put a branch this way. I'm gonna make a little bud again. Another branch, a little bud, just like that. And you know, as I'm painting it, you can see you don't really need to really draw it, but I'm just using the brush. This is this butterfly shape again, like a little thing here. And then a little half one over here. So it's kind of like this little half shape. And a little piece right here. Now you can show some of the branch or cover it where it's not really seeing the branch. And this part would be yellow. But that's how you draw it. You can just slow this down, the video down to see it. So again, it's just kind of like this curvy up. And then you add a little bottom and a little starburst to make the orchid flower. And then I just added like another little, sometimes you see those pots have those little squirrely branches. Just like a little squirrely branch like that. So that's what we did. And like I said, if you're a Patreon member, you can download that. So this, today's tutorial is a, kind of like a mixed media tutorial. You've got a 9 by 12 piece of 100% um, cotton cold pressed paper from Arches. I taped it on a piece of cardboard and I only taped it down because we're not painting the whole thing. We're going to paint in here. We're going to put a nice big gray wash and if you don't have it like taped down, it's going to kind of buckle on you. And you want it to be flat. You want it to dry flat. And that's why the taping helps a lot. And in the background, we're going to use watercolor. And I put just a, like a, a line here, three quarters of the way down going across just to give me a guide of where I'm going to put a different so it's gonna be mostly gray but like you know like the where the where the pot would land would be um, right about there and then if you want to you can 
you know, like I said, trace or draw in the pot where you want it to go. But I'm going to trace the the, the um, drawing after I put down the gray wash. And you can use um, graphite paper. It comes in white. It comes in um, graphite color. And so obviously this is not going to show up on the paper, I mean this paint, we're going to paint in a gray, gray background, it's not going to show up, so you might use, an, use to use white graphite paper. I think I have a link for both graphite papers in my uh, description box, but if not, you can just Google white graphite paper and find it. If not, you can just, like I said, draw on the gray paper, gray back wash with like a white pencil or, you know, you figure it out. So we're going to get started with the wash. Okay, as you get started with the wash, you can use either black um, gouache or black watercolor or paints gray, whatever works for you. I'm gonna get it, I put some, I just put some black wash here. And I'm gonna get really loose. I might add even kind of the color with that. I might add some blue, Prussian blue watercolor. I don't want it just flat gray. I like to keep my grays in different tones. So it's more of a blue gray. So I've added some Prussian blue. And like I said, we're gonna make a simple wash. I'm just gonna grab this craft painter brush. I put some water on here. Again, it's gonna be really loose. And watch, we're gonna just go like this. I'm gonna just put in this gray wash. I might need more water to go with this. I'm not gonna do the whole paper. I just want this simple wash to go like this. My little palette's getting too wet over here. So I'm just grabbing this. You can use this on hot press too if you didn't want to use it on cold press. I'm going to grab some more of this blue and some gray. You're going to mix up a lot of this color tone. Just going in and flushing in a gray. This paper really soaks up the color pretty quickly. And see, since it's very wet, it starts to get a little buckly. So that's why we taped it down. I don't know about buckly is a word, but so here I'm just just I'm just painting this area. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You can have some like dry brush gray coming out of the side. That's the whole point. It's supposed to be very expressive. See, I'm just going to go like that a little bit more. Okay, at this point, I can go and see I'm going to have my my little horizon line, not horizon line, but where I want the kind of darker, kind of like where the table would be, grays coming in here. And you can start to use a little less water little more paint going right across. It can get even darker still. I mean, if I, you know, depending on how you want to do it. Really dark. You can even make this background even darker. I think I might actually go do that too. And it doesn't have to be this flat wash. You have this multicolored grays going here. I kind of like that. And naturally, you'd wait till it all dries. But, you know, you can start to use the white paint when it's somewhat dry, depending on how thick the paint is. I just still, it's gonna dry pretty light. I want it a little bit darker. So I'm going in and adding in more paint. I don't mind it being darker. That's the whole point with this really nice, cool, deep gray. And then I'm gonna go down here and get a little bit darker still down here. Okay, so once you get the color tones that you like, and like I said, it doesn't have to be gray. It can be more blues if you want it deep red, whatever you feel like you want the background to be. I just want to make it this deep color tone. 
I'm going to let this dry a bit and then we're going to come back and work on the rest of it. Okay, so now that everything's dry, I actually used the graphite paper. It worked well because um, it was it dried lighter. So you can see the darker gray. I don't know if you can see this so close. The lines of the sketch in here. So now we're going to we're going to use the the different mediums. So I've got gouaches in here and watercolor. Um, if you don't have a lot of gouaches, I suggest like obviously have the white, right? And you can kind of mix white in with watercolor. Um, or if you have like acrylic, you can water it down. But um, I have white gouache. I like a, this is a yellow, a primary yellow gouache and olive green gouache. And also in my palette, I have some Prussian watercolor blue. I have some Van Dyke brown uh, watercolor. So I'm gonna combine like watercolor and gouache, mixed media. Um, I'm gonna grab my Princeton 8 long round. I'm going to play around with um, the colors for the leaves. So I've got the olive green here. I can mix in with some Prussian blue watercolor. See, I mix the gouache and the watercolor, right? And a little bit of this Van Dyke brown watercolor. Just get a little deeper, darker green. Maybe a little more blue in here. And then grab some of that brown. You can even take some of this magenta. I have a quinacridone magenta over here, and just get that in there, and it just gets a little bit deeper. So I've mixed the watercolor and the gouache, mixed media. Um, just gonna throw in the green, right, just like so. And it's on top of a dark. It's on top of the gray, so it's gonna show up a little darker. What we can do, if you want it just a little bit lighter, see it's already like darker green because of the gray tone. This is where the gouache really comes in handy. So it is obviously darker right now, the green that you see, which is fine if you want to keep it that way. But if you want to put some highlights of the a lighter tone, you're going to grab clean up my brush, this yellow that I have here, which is gouache. Mix it over here. It's kind of bright. I'm going to grab some of that Van Dyke Brown. But because it's gouache, you can paint a lighter color. I'm going to go a little bit of the white, teeny bit, go right on top of that green. See, I'm mixing that. You can just go right in there, go paint right on top of that. So you can paint light on top of dark with gouache. And even then, I can grab the yellow again. I might put a little bit of this magenta with it, it's a little intense. And go grab my little white. See, we're right on top of that. So you get the watercolor and the gouache working at the same time. Now that might be too bright because I didn't intend for it to be that bright. I'm gonna go back in and just go over that. A little too bright. So here we're gonna just fill in the screens. You can try and put a lighter green in, so you have a like lime green color and water it down. Water down gouache. And it will show up eh, fairly light compared to the green that we just did. You know, you could try that in watercolor, see what happens. Play around with your stuff. It's good to play around with a couple of mediums with one painting. It doesn't always have to be all watercolor. And gouache is a water-based paint. Um, unless you have acrylic wash, then it's not. <laughs> it's acrylic paint. So I'm going in just throwing in the leaves here. I'm going to put in some darker blue. This is the Prussian blue. A little bit of the brown. So it's a combination of the watercolor and the gouache, which I feel like is kind of fun. And it just makes it painting a little more interesting. If you want it to be like solid watercolor, then you would have to do, you could do this whole thing again the same way, but you would just have to, I would suggest maybe doing a masking fluid around um, the design and up here, and then you can just wash the whole entire gray background. And, or you can, you can paint around it, but it's just not gonna be have this simple wash. 
I'm just putting in these leaves. This one on the background here, I want to make a little bit darker still. Having it on the gray ground kind of helps. I have a little bit of gua black wash over here. Can get it even darker green still. Just right in there. With a variety of green tones. And there's another little green leaf peeping down in here. We're doing the sketch. So I've got a you know a variety of the greens coming in here. Kind of meld in here for the orchid. You can get even more technical if you want to. Make a darker green and put the little lines kind of going down the leaf. Most of it have like a just big dark center line but some have a few little scratched lines in them again I can take that lighter gouache tone and I'm just kind of putting in a little highlight here lighter green just kind of going up here You see, you can paint that lighter color right on the top of the dark. That's the beauty of it. I'm going in and adding different tones, the greens. But mostly the, 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 the orchid would be a dark, deep green. Um, the leaves are dark and, dark and deep. They're not like this pretty limey color. Because I'm actually mixing in watercolor and gouache at the same time. I'm going to make this one a little bit darker, a little bit wider. Okay. And then the stem is more like a, I would, it can be brown with a tinge of green to it. So I'm actually using my watercolor, which is the Van Dyke Brown. And it could be a little wonky. It doesn't have to be this perfect little stem. It has a little green tinge, so I'm going to add some of this green gouache to it. That's a little too bright. So I mixed the green with the brown. And then we told you we had the stem going that way, and we had a stem coming this way and this way, and coming down this way a little bit. Now on the little blooms that are on the side, there will be a light green. That's when you use the gouache. So you, oops, I add a little bit of white to that bright limey green color. And I'm just making those little dots, filling it in. That's what we talked about. And a little, little, little bit of yellow, highlighting it here. A little bit of white, a little bit of yellow. So you see how I just put a little bit of that white, the tip of my brush, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of green. Just a little highlight on the edge of this little bud. It's going to pop it out a little bit more. You can do the same thing kind of on this little stems out here. Now if you want to do a little bit of this dry brush technique, see I'm just kind of taking a little bit of paint and just roughing it like that so you get this nice bright green kind of going here like I said I still want to keep the orchid in the dark tones because it's they have dark leaves but you can brighten up a bit this one here make this one a little bit darker just a little bit darker okay so now we're going to have the fun part with the blooms. So I've cleaned up my brush. Get this green paint out of the way. Just going to grab the towel. Okay. So, oh, still dirty, see? Got to really clean that brush. That's my number eight still. Going to get this white gouache really loose. 
if it's not loose loose it's going to be like this intense white on there and we don't want it we want it kind of be translucent so now that's really loose almost like watercolor i'm just going to wash in that shape we talked about the butterfly shape so when it's translucent it's automatically going to have those gray shadows already made for you without having to have to you to paint them and that is kind of the trick filling it all in about washing in the gouache for the orchid on a gray background or even any color background it kind of has more realistic quality to it without actually going in and working on all the little bit nooks and crannies that make it that way so here I'm just filling it in. And then you can get real intense white, well not intense, but like less water down white and go in here and add that kind of on the edge here, on the bottom a little bit. And you see how that just looks, the gray. Then you get that more realistic part of the orchid. See I'm adding more wash without the water down version and then we're going to add the yellow I'm going to take some of this it's got too much green next to my yellow we have the uh, cabin yellow deep with that yellow gouache kind of mixed together make this little, eh, like a medium yellow and we can just take the brush the tip of it and just make tap that in there add a little more white to that you know it should be a little more yellow orange in a way that got a little too green so I'm gonna take this magenta and kind of mix it in here there we go and we've got that yellow orange look how simple that was I don't think I actually see this now hold on okay pull it down we'll do it again anyway so let's go back over this again so it's really loose right white gouache and you're going to fill in that shape we talked about that we drew that you traced kind of like a butterfly with this little blobby thing on the bottom really loose and automatically because you already have that wash down there it's going to dry see how it dried like this more gray and then you're going to go back in and add some white again not everywhere, but on the outer edge, and a little bit here. So it's like a highlight. So even here, it's still dried gray. I'm gonna go back in and grab some more concentrated paint. I'm just gonna highlight some areas of the orchid. Depending on how much water you put in here it will be not gray or gray but that's the cool quality about this little trick this is a little trick i'm teaching you guys okay i'm adding some i keep adding more layers and this is drying gray again see but you kind of wanted to do that and you're going to go back in and flush in the white there's a little bud your loose white another little bud you can make these orchids a little bit bigger this is a little small I'm going to go out here a little bit I want it bigger bigger and bolder so I had that sketch but I'm just going above my above my sketch Gonna fill that in. See, it's drying gray, but then you just fill in areas of white, kind of on the edge here. Got a little piece back here. Just taking the tip, and I'm just gonna kind of grab the paint again, like another pass. 
only less water this time. I'm kind of hitting the edges and just kind of pushing paint in, leaving some of that gray. Just a fun way of painting something different. This one's a little more concentrated. I could take some of that paint out. I do a lot of daisies this way, it's a lot of fun. Okay, I'm gonna grab that yellow again for the center. I'm just kind of dabbing it in the center. Oops, starburst of yellow. There's a little bit here and here. You might want to put a little bit of green, dark green around it too. I'll clean up my brush. Grab some of this dark green paint I have. I just kind of hit in the edge of that yellow. Green and brown. I'll grab a little bit of green brown. Because it just looks like a plopped yellow in here. You want a little bit. Just not cooperating. <laughs> of course. Zoom in a little bit. So I'm grabbing like a deep green brown here. And I'm just gonna tap, 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 like on one edge. I don't want it too dark, just a little bit. That yellow shouldn't be this one solid little yellow. You're having this little tap, tap. See? Out here, looks more realistic that way. Oh, goodness, doesn't want to cooperate. Why does the paint not want to cooperate? Okay. Tap, tap, tap. There we go. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Get the little brown, squirrely stem thing. Wah. Remember, it doesn't have to look perfect. Mine certainly does not. And then the stem here, connecting. In the sketch, I really didn't have that, but I'm gonna add that. And here you're starting to tweak, like we're gonna be doing the base. I would do like a white base too. So we take the same white paint. We're gonna, again, get it really loose. I have a little yellow in this now, so it's kind of cream. Like I said, it's going to dry gray. Really loose. It's going to have a really pretty look to it. See? It's kind of going like this. Since we already have that gray color down. I'm just going to go in and fill this. Really loose squash. It's already making it like a light gray. And I'm going to keep adding in some real concentrated gouache. Kind of keep it on the, the light source I'm having coming from this way. So you're going to see me add really concentrated gouache on the edges here. A little bit in here too. It's orchid. Just gonna give this bright white kind of on the side right here. And then we're going to loosely paint the rest of it again. I mean, it's already drying gray, right? And if it didn't, we can add some of that gray back in. Just going to go right under here. It's just a little trick that I've been doing lately that I like, that I enjoy. I'm going to take some of this paint away so it dries gray. 
and grab some more concentrated gouache. Get that white right in there. And you see how I just kind of like took some of that concentrated and just put it on the edge here and here. It just really pops it. Especially with that gray background. It's just a little trick. And this one's a little lighter. See that? You could do this with paper whites, um, white lilies. If this didn't dry in the, t in the tones, we're going to have to add some gray. So I'm going to grab some black and put in some gray here, just so it makes sense. It's starting to look a little too white. So we'll get that gray color back in here the shadow and then from here you can keep it this way you can go in and add a nice wash oh, get too much gouache over with my black my black is bluish gray I'll add another pass gray tone here the shadow like that see a little deeper one here you can still if you really want the table in there you can still go ahead and do that um, it doesn't really matter I mean I, I had started to do that you can still do that too so if you want to put the table in make this whole section darker Excuse me, working this whole thing. Just washing this whole color and then even make that shadow even darker still. So I decided to put the darker gray in here. Like we intended in the first place. You would, might want to use a bigger brush because this was kind of small. And then when that dries, we go back in an even darker shadow. So we have the table that it's on, like so. And then we're going to go back in and we can put the darker shadow again. Now it's going to bleed with this section, so we might want to wait. But even still, this whole section over on this side would be darker. Than this side. Let's just take up some of this paint here. Might use a bigger brush to do that. I have my Princeton Neptune 12. I'm going to lift up some of this paint. How I do that is I grab the water, I go in, and I dab it on the paper towel. Just like that. So it's not as dark. Now again, see I did the nice highlights on the leaves. If these are still looking too dark, they are supposed to be dark leaves, but you can go in and add highlights to them too. So, because the light is hitting it. Make the leaves a little bit brighter. You know, it don't all have to be this really deep dark color. Gonna mix up my dark greens again. I feel like the greens are getting too flat, you know. Goodness. I don't want to cooperate today. That's what I suggest if you really want to just put a little highlight, lighter color, kind of on the edge. 
maybe a little bit here too. A little bit here. This one's dark underneath, so you would probably put it on the front. Just a little highlight. And you're grabbing that yellow. Get that multicolors going there. These ones will be darker because they're in the back, and these ones will be darker still because they're kind of on this side. You see how they had a little highlight? You can go even lighter than that. I'm gonna grab the white and the yellow, just another little highlight. Do do, and I'm just gonna make the branch a little bit lighter with the green. You're just tweaking at this point. Adding in some green on this branch. Like I said, with the um, the pot, see it's already made gray, it's already been gray, so I'm gonna go back in again with this gouache. Put another pass in. If you want a white pot. It's going to dry kind of gray tones again. I'm just putting in this wash of white. It's got a little sneaky trick. Play around with that. And really grab the white right there. See, it's going to dry even grayer. It's kind of a fun trick, isn't it? And like I said, we're gonna to have to keep the thing taped down because it's gonna buckle. It will buckle. I can already feel it buckling. And when this dries, this section we can put a nice little shadow in. So I still feel like as I stood up and looked back that my greens were still too dark. I do wanna brighten them up, even though the leaves are generally darker in the, um, Orchid, I'm just going to go back in, grab some of the green and the yellow, just brighten them up. I don't want it so dark. See? I'm going to do a dry brush, throwing in some lighter color. Just want to punch it up a bit. Kind of brighten up all these leaves. It's feeling a little sad, dark. It's good to step back. See, I'm stepping up, I'm looking. I do like the dark gray tones over here. I mean, dark green. So maybe I'll keep this section a little bit darker. But over in here, we really want to brighten them up a little bit more. Right? We want this intensity of light. So I'm going to grab that yellow, maybe a little bit of this yellow-orange color too, a teeny bit of that white. It's going to go in here, even still. Just take that and just dry brush it across. Just punch it up even more. Just kind of on these leaves over here, because then the light source is coming from here. You can even get even lighter, a little white, a little yellow. Yeah, you see like the light's coming in this way, and you would be hitting this leaf too. So we want to get really light right in here. A little bit down here. Don't be afraid. With this gouache, you can keep painting over and over and over. But now we got the light source coming in that way. So this makes more sense. Just doing a little dry brush here. I think we've achieved almost what we were looking for. 
just this pretty intense, you know, orchid. I feel like the shadows here are not as, they're kind of goofy. So we're going to go in with the black, the gray. I'm going to put in some shadows right on top of that and right next to it here. Because it wouldn't be that white right there. It has some gray tones from the plants. You can just take your gray and go right in there. And that makes more sense. Although this one got a little too gray down there. I'm just going to wipe a little bit away with my finger. That's better. And then again, like I said before, I wanted to add just an even another darker pass of the shadow here. So you don't have to make the pot white. You can have made it like a pretty color. I'm just showing you different ways to do things. But it's more dramatic. <laughs> right? We're gonna make this very dramatic kind of looking orchid. I could have made that pot another whole different color. Again, I'm gonna grab some more white. I'm just gonna put some highlights. Just like that. And that just punched it right up. So that's pretty much Just play around with, um, like I said, the color if you don't want the pot white. And a little bit of highlights again. I'm going to go back in here again. I just feel like it's not getting what I want to do. Just a little bit of yellow. Dry brush. That's a little too bright. How it just punches that up. Right? It's like a light source coming in there. Makes it pretty intense. Keep playing around with that. Add a little more here. So you can see that the light's coming in this way. Just gonna go a little bit more in here. And that's how you do it. You just keep adding and adding until you feel like. All right, that looks good. So now that has the intensity that the light has been over there. You can even throw in a little white highlight. And that's how I do the lighting. So it's some gouache, some watercolor, you know, a little pretty dramatic. <laughs> and the wash could have been, um, instead of gray, it could have been a color. Could have been blue, could be whatever you want it to be. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. This was fun, right? Something different. Trying to give you guys something different to do on Floral Friday. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Um, also, don't forget if you're a Patreon member to download Traceable and um, if you have any, and hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials are up. And uh, check out my other channel. I have an acrylic channel called Amazing Art. Uh, I'll be posting more videos on there soon. And there's a link in the description box. So take care, guys, and have a great weekend.